Hello, humans and cephalopods. My name is Scoon, and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club Plus. It has been a while, quite a while since I played this. Actually, let me see when the last time I streamed this was. Hold on. I can actually tell you the exact day. I'm, I'm very curious on this. Hold on a moment. I have it up on my VOD channel here, up on YouTube. Um... God, when did I last play this? Oh, it has been a long... Oh my god. September 12th. Almost three months now. Uh, oh, dude, you have no idea, Jax. I put so much time into so many of the nitty-gritty details. Like, my bot is practically a person. Um, I love making panels in my Discord. I spend so much time on. I am a slave my content, you know? <laughs> I love it. Alright. Let's freaking do this, though, shall we? Alright, load game. So we last left off somewhere. Why did I save here? Oh. <laughs> I remember. They mentioned in-game, remember to save. So I saved there. Okay. All right, here we go. Back with the girls. Hold on, I'm getting a DM. Okay. I can respond to that later. I walk home with Sayuri once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. All right, see you later, Jax. Thank you so much for being here. Hopefully we'll see you again soon. Hey, Sayori. Sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, uh, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... I mean, Sayori fumbles with her words. So let's just say that one day, Natsuki asked, you, asked to walk home with you. Uh, huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> um, well, if Natsuki asked me to walk home, what would I do? Okay, thinking about, this is Scood, this is me, right? I'm in this situation. I walk home with Sayori every day. We're childhood friends. But one day, Natsuki's like, hey, will you walk home with me? I mean, I would probably go with Natsuki, you know, just to be like, you know, maybe she has something to tell me. Maybe she wants to talk to me about something. Yeah, I'll go with Natsuki. Ah, oh, walking home with Natsuki, huh? Why does the thought make my uh, heart pound? It doesn't, actually. I was just curious, you know, what she wanted to talk about, maybe. I mean, I think I would be afraid of what she'd do to me if I turned her down. I am not afraid of, Nat of Natsuki. Isn't she so cute and fun to be around? That has nothing to do with what I just said. Look, this is strictly business here. Strictly business. <laughs> you admitted it. Jeez. There's not even any point in speculating something that's never going to happen. Well, maybe. But I just like to think about it. It's not long before you don't need me anymore, you know? Need you? Sayori, I can't figure out how you're seeing things in your head right now. Sorry. Everyone is different. Nobody in the club is replacement for you. Hmm. If you say so. The conversation trails off and I'm left feeling awkward. But it was kind of her fault for tracking me with such a weird question. Like, what the fuck, Sayuri? <laughs> I'm sorry, that's fucked up. <laughs> I can't just lie to her. But if there's something that makes her happy, I would hate to take that away from her. That's why I said there's no point in speculating. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time. All right, so we get to start off with a poem. That was the end of a day. We were so close to finishing that day and I just was like, nah, we're done here. All right. Dave, are you in chat yet? Are you here? I saw you responded to me on Discord. I just want to make sure you're here. You're here. Okay, good. I, I just needed somebody to... Um... 
Thank you, Bavadi. I needed someone to transcribe my poetry, you know? Okay. So here's our poem of the day. Forgive Bouncy Massacre. Flying Disoriented Hope. Heaven sent twirl. Nope. Heaven sent um bubbles. Incapable sticky tragedy. Loud after image. Aura explode. Sparkle raindrops. Melancholy ambient starscape. All right. Did you write that down? Was was it uh was I slow enough for you? Or were you quick enough rather? Think you got it? All right, let's see it. All right. A poem by Scood. Forgive Bouncy Massacre, Flying Disoriented, Hope Heaven Sent Bubbles, Incapable Sticky Tragedy, Loud After Image Aura, Explode Sparkle, Raindrops Melancholy, Ambient Starscape. Whew. Oh, that ending. Oh, that makes me tear up a little bit, honestly. Oh, man. It's be it's perfect. It's it's perfect. It's not as good as the kawaii... Oh, fuck. What is it? Unending kawaii climax or something like that. I don't, something like that. I don't remember what it was. <laughs> but that one was good. Oh, Maddie, Maddie, hi, hi, Maddie, hi, welcome in, hi. Oh man, I'm the last one here again. Don't worry, I just walked in too. Were you practicing piano again? Yeah. <laughs> you must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and now picking up piano. Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. Remember that the club won't be here if it weren't for all of you, or if it, if it wasn't for all of you. And I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out for the festival, too. Uh, I can't wait for the festival. It's going to be great. Huh? Weren't you complaining about it just yesterday, Natsuki? Well, yeah. I'm not talking about our part of the festival. But it's a whole day of school where we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. You sound a little bit like Sayori all of a sudden. Monica, do they usually have fried squid? Squid? Yeah, what's up, Monica? What can I do for you? <laughs> Talking to me? Breaking the fourth wall there? <laughs> That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on. Are you saying you don't like squid? Oh. I'm sorry. I'm flattered right now. Everyone's everyone's really, like, sticking up for me here. Thank you, Natsuki. Thanks for liking me. You, of all people? I didn't say I don't like it. Besides, what do you mean, you of all people? Oh, it's the tentacle thing. Natsuki's talking about the tentacle thing again. Because it's right in your name, uh, Ika. Mon Ika. Ika is squid. Eh? That's not how you say my name at all. Also, that joke makes no sense in translation. It does to weebs. Ah, never mind. Let's just focus on our own event for now, okay? <laughs> fine, fine. Your reactions aren't as fun as Yuri's or Sayuri's anyway. Excuse me. Where is Sayuri, anyway? Oh, there you are. Sayuri is sitting at a desk in the corner of the room, looking down at nothing. 
I walk over to her. I bet she's looking in her desk, not nothing. Just a hunch. Hey, it's Sayori. I wave my hand in front of her face. Uh, eh? You're spacing out again. Uh, uh <laughs> sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Huh. Is everything all right? Uh, of course. Why wouldn't it be? It just feels like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. Anyway, have a great day. Jeez, you worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? Diary shows me a big smile. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Well, all right. See you later. If you say so. Goodbye. I worriedly glance at Sayori before turning back toward everyone else. But the conversation is already dispersed with everyone back at their usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monica if she's noticed anything about Sayori recently. Since they've been preparing for the festival, they must be spending a lot of time together. Those girls. I timidly approach Monica, who is shuffling through some papers at her desk. Scoot, what's up? Hey, this might sound a little strange, but have you noticed anything up with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading into it a little too much, but she seems a little bit downcast today. Oh, you think so? I can't say I've noticed anything about her. Monica peers across the room at Sayori, who is idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Maybe there's something on her mind. But I'm surprised I'm not the one asking you, Scoon. You certainly know a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she's never really liked this. She's always talked to me about things that bothered her. But this time, when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I know it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask if you knew anything, so I'll drop it now. No, no. It's important to me, too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. And I also care about the well-being of my club members, you know? Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. Uh, are, are you sure about that? She seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she just has a hard time bringing it up with the person of interest. Person of interest? What the fuck does that mean, Monica? I'm saying that maybe the thing on her mind is you, Scood. Me? I mean, I don't blame her, but like, what made you think that? Well, I probably shouldn't say too much, but... Sayori talks about you more than anything else, you know? Eh? She's been so much happier ever since you've joined the club. It's like an extra light was turned on inside of her. What? No way. Sayori's always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. It's not any different now that I... Now that it... It's not any different now than it always has been. <laughs> you're so funny, Scood. Have you thought that maybe you're always... You're o you've always seen her as so cheerful because that's just how she is when she's around you? Uh, I, I said too much. I'm sorry. What do I know, anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so you should just forget about what I said. I'll try to talk to her, so try not to think about it for now. Ah. All right. Monica smiles meaningfully. <sighs> Sorry, I'm sleepy. I know she forgot. Ugh. I know she said to forget about it. But I already, I already know that I won't be able to get her words out of my head. Monica stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Sayori is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Sayori and gently talk to her. I thought that said gently lick her. That is a very different game. That doesn't happen in this one. I've actually played the game. Okay, anyway. Um, but she keeps her. She's keeping her voice so quiet that I can't hear her from here. I sigh and sit myself down. It must be some nice supporting commentary for Sayori. Because Monica is such a great person. What a great friend. I know Sayori told me not to worry about her and to have fun with everyone else. But that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. 
Exactly how much do I care about her that I'm letting this weigh me down so much? Now it feels like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary. But there's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. Hey, you. Yeah? I look up to see Natsuki next to me. Are you just going to sit there and keep staring at nothing? There isn't that much time, so... Ah, sorry. I didn't mean to make you worry or anything. It's not like I'm worried. I was just... Natsuki glances down at her side. She's holding a volume of manga in her hand. Oh, shit, that's right. Something just came up for a minute, but we can get started now. I won't make you wait any longer. Jeez. Now you're making me feel like a jerk. If something's bothering you, then you can just tell me to leave you alone, and I will. I mean, assuming you didn't feel like talking about it or anything. She practically mumbles that last part. Nah, I'm probably making it seem like a bigger deal than it is. I've just been thinking about Sayori, that's all. S Sayori? Thinking about her? Yeah, uh, she seems pretty down today. But she didn't want to admit it to me. So I can't help but wonder if something happened to her. Oh. Natsuki exhales. <sighs> well, first of all, you should really work on your phrasing. But anyway, you're her best friend, right? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Then in that case, I think you should just trust her a little more. If she needed you, then you would be the first person she would go to, right? Well, yeah, good point, good point. I mean, some people just have those days. You can't always avoid it. I mean, unless you're me. <laughs> uh, I'm, I always have good days. <laughs> If anything, she probably doesn't want you to worry about her because it's important. Yeah, that kind of that's kind of what she said to me. Maybe it's not right for me to go against her wishes. Exactly. If she needs you to worry about her, then it'll be a lot more obvious. Yeah, it's pretty obvious, though. Yeah. These people are so shitty about, like, friends. And, like, friendship. And, like, that they're so bad at it. Welcome in, Monroe. Good to see you. Yeah, she's super cute. I like Natsuki. I don't know if she's my favorite of the four girls. I think, like, unironically, it's Monica for me. Like, even knowing the full game, definitely Monica. Natsuki fiddles with the book. She's. Oh, wait, did I read that previous thing? Hold on. I should have thought of it that way from the start. Okay. Natsuki fiddles with the book she's holding in her hands. She really means a lot to you, doesn't she? Ah, um, don't get the wrong idea or anything. We've just been friends for a long time. It's normal to be worried about your friends. I mean, you were worried about me, so... I was not! Jeez, if you're fine, then let's hurry and get started already. Yeah, yeah. It's manga time. Oh, it's poem time, my bad. Okay, everyone. After some time passes, Monica calls out to the club room. Why don't we share our poems now? I was really excited and ready for the manga, but okay. Before I know it, everything is back to normal. Everyone goes to retrieve the poems, and so do I do the same do too. I make eye contact with Monica, and she smiles at me. I wonder what she was talking about with Sayori. Probably just being a great friend and trying to support her. All right, let's go down the list. Start with Sayori. All right, so I'm going to read my poem one more time here for anyone who just joined. Um, because Sayori is now reacting to it. So here's my poem. Forgive Bouncy Massacre. Flying disoriented hope, heaven-sent bubbles, incapable sticky tragedy. Loud after-image aura, explode sparkle raindrops, melancholy ambient starscape. Ooh, that's Starscape, though. No, I think my favorite part of the poem is the incapable sticky tragedy. That's the best part about it. <laughs> incapable sticky. <laughs> the more you think about it, actually. <laughs> yeah, we're having an incapable sticky tragedy over here. My bad. Hmm. 
It's nice, I guess. Come on, I can already tell you don't like it. It's the incapable sticky tragedy, isn't it? Throwing you off. Well, you don't need to worry about what I think. After all, you wrote this for someone else, didn't you? I wrote it for me, actually. Probably Yuri. Uh, huh? I didn't write this for anyone specifically. Maybe. That's not really what I meant, though. But it's okay. You're making new friends, just like I was hoping. That makes me really happy. And you're happy too, right? In this club? Well, of course I am. Good. That's all that matters to me. Thank you, Scoon. Sayori, is there something wrong? Huh? No, nothing. I'm just a little tired today. <laughs> all right. Oh, tomorrow's the big day, isn't it? Shit, we're already there. Nice. Just tell me if you need anything. I will. Don't worry about me, okay? You can go play with everyone else now. If you insist. Yay. I'm gonna go home a little bit early today. Oh, wait. Is today the big day? Is it today or tomorrow? I don't remember. I don't remember the order of events here. Tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? I think it's tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say anything else, Sayori cheerfully walks out of the classroom, humming to herself. Well, I guess I don't get to read her poem today. That's unfortunate. Alright, time for Natsuki. This one's alright. Alright? Well, yeah. It doesn't blow me away, but there's nothing I really hate about it. It's just not really my style, I mean. That's fine. Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sayori's poem from yesterday. Huh? You think so? Yeah, well, I guess if you've been friends with her for so long, you might be on the same wavelength. But you never really struck me as her type. Sayori has a type all of a sudden? Well, I don't know, but honestly, how can someone so... fluffy spend so much time with someone like with someone like you. It's like she's dragging around a dead weight. That uh, was a little bit unnecessary. But think of it this way. If it weren't for me, she would probably just fly away like letting go of a balloon. You could say we each take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. I'll be your beach. Your mind is so full of troubles and fears that diminished your wonder over the years. But today I have a special place, a beach for us to go. A shore reaching beyond your sight, a sea that sparkles with brilliant light. The walls in your mind will melt away before the sunny glow. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap. I'll, in a way you thought you had left in a way you thought had left you long ago. Let's bury your heavy thoughts in a pile of sand, bathe in sunbeams and hold my hand. Wash your insecurities in the salty sea and let me see you shine. Let's leave your memories in a footprint trail, set you free in my windy sail, and remember the reasons you're wonderful when you press your lips to mine. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way you thought had left you long ago. But if you let me be by your side, your own beach, your own escape, you'll learn to love yourself again. I mean, that just straight up sounded like a song lyrics, not a poem, but I guess they're pretty similar. Yeah, I felt like I kept writing about negative things, so I wanted to write something with a nice message for once. Besides, the beach is awesome. Kind of hard to write anything negative about the beach. So you decided to write about the beach first, and then came up with a message later. Yeah, well, it's only because of what happened yesterday. I mean, after Yuri and I realized we kind of wrote about the same thing, she wanted to pick a topic and have us both write about it, or whatever. Ugh, you can really see her doing that, too. Making us write about a simple topic, then trying to impress me by coming up with something all fancy. 
Well, it's not like I care. I just did it anyway. I mean, I guess mine ended up being kind of metaphorical too. But there's nothing wrong with doing that once in a while. At the very least, it was good practice. Speaking of Yuri, hello, hello. What do you think about my in incapable, sticky tragedy, Yuri? Scoon, this is wonderful. Oh, oh, oh my. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> the emotion that I poured into the, the sticky tragedy. Oh, oh God, Yuri, please. Is this the result of trying what I suggested yesterday? <laughs> Oh my god. I need a moment. I need a moment. Nope, we're going, we're going. Full send. Yeah, I guess so. You did a good job explaining. I really wanted to... I really wanted to try giving it more feeling. Oh my god. Yuri visibly swallow- Why is this so suggestive? What the fuck? Even our hands appear sweaty. I'm not used to this. Used to what? I don't know. It's fine. Take your time. Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts. I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I offer that patience to her. Yeah, just being appreciated like this, I guess. What, with a sticky tragedy? <laughs> It probably sounds really stupid, but seeing someone motivated by my writing, it just makes me really happy. Are you saying you've never shared your writing before? Yuri nods. Really? I don't believe it. I really only write for myself. And besides, people would just laugh at me. Do you really think that? Again, Yuri nods. Huh. Even your close friends? For some reason, Yuri doesn't respond, because she doesn't have any friends. Yuri? Yuri smiles sadly. Scoon, during lunchtime, I eat by myself. Did you know that? Actually, yes, I did. It's a great time to find a quiet spot and do some reading. In fact, I always have books with me. You could say I really enjoy reading. Well, that's one way to put it, anyway. But... Books are so full of amazing and inspiring people. People who want... Sorry, people you want to fall in love with. Or people you just know would make a really good friend. Cheerful people who always put a smile on your face. Or deep thinkers and problem solvers who discover the mysteries of life. So when you look at it that way, I'm surrounded by friends every day. You know? Okay, so do you read the poems to these fictional characters, though? Like, you're not answering the question here, Yuri. And those friends don't laugh at me. They don't tease me for spacing out all the time. Because they're not real. They don't make fun of my body type. And they don't hate me for acting like a know-it-all. People say that about you. I'm not a know-it-all, Scoon. It's the opposite. I don't know anything. I don't know how to, oops, I don't know how to talk to people. <laughs> that, that was funny timing. It's like, I don't know how to talk to people. Text box just vanishes. She just doesn't know how to talk to people anymore. It's just, oh, oops. I don't know how to make people see me as normal. I don't even know how to make myself happy. I have all these feelings and all I can do with them is read and write. But it wasn't until now that I started sharing it with you, that I really understood what was missing all this time. But I haven't really done anything. No, that's wrong. Just being patient and respectful. That's really important to me. I know I'm a difficult person, Scoon. I speak too slowly. I second guess myself all the time. Sorry. She said she spoke slowly, so I was slowing it down a little bit. Um, I read too deeply into things. But every time, you've always treated me just like anyone else. It's so rare that I feel comfortable with myself when I talk to others. 
But that's why every time I talk to you, I just feel really happy. I see. Well, I treat you how you deserve to be treated, Yuri. And if other people don't see it that way, then screw them. Not literally, but like, you know, fuck them. But not literally, but like, you know. <laughs> oh my god, I'm sorry. I mean, I joined this club hoping I would make friends. And I would say I've had at least one success. Wouldn't you? I mean, me and Natsuki are like super close. Uh, um, if you put it that way, yeah. We really are friends now, aren't we? I, Yuri, I was talking about Natsuki. Like, you're nice and all, but I wouldn't say we're really friends. Like, you know, we've only known each other a few days. We haven't really connected that much. I've mostly been reading manga with Natsuki lately. Yuri puts her head in her hand. But this time, she's smiling as she does it. Do you want to show me your poem? Yeah. I do. I just want this to be like nothing like the rest of her poem. Just, just really basic. Let me get it for you. Of course it's not going... Okay, here we go. Beach. A marvel millions of years in the making, where the womb of Earth chaotically meets the surface. Under a clear blue sky, an expanse of bliss. But beneath gray rolling clouds, an endless enigma. The easiest world to get lost in is one where everything can be found. Only, oh, sorry, one can only build a sandcastle where the sand is wet. But where the sand is wet, the tide comes. Will it gently lick at your foundations until you give it? The, s the sand is wet, the tide comes. Lick at it? You're gonna lick the foundations until you give in? What is this a metaphor for? Or will a sudden wave send you crashing down in the blink of an eye? Either way, the outcome is the same. Yet we still build sandcastles. I stand where the foam wraps around my ankles, where my toes squish into the sand. The salty air is therapeutic. The breeze is gentle yet powerful. I sink my toes into the ultimate boundary line. Tempted by the foamy tendril. Turn back and I abandon my peace to a road at the shore. Drift forward and I return to Earth forevermore. Um, I'm aware that the beach is kind of an inane thing to write about, but I did my best to make a meta take a metaphorical approach to it. Yeah, Natsuki already told me about it. She did? She didn't say anything weird, did she? She just wanted us to write about the same topic again. I suppose to better compare the differences in our writing styles or thought processes. Hey, how you doing, Redbeard? Welcome to the chat, my friend. Oh, shit, you're supposed to have an auto shout out. Let me fix that for you real quick. Hold on a second here. Let me, uh. Uh. Ba -ba -ba. Do -do submit. Okay. There we go. That should work next time you're here. Try, try, uh. Never, there, no, that's, that's, uh, stay hydrated. Hold on, wait, hold on. I'm gonna restart my bot, but it's gonna give another auto shout out to, uh, the other people who get them. So, Monroe, you're gonna get another one. Dave, you're gonna get another one once the bot's back up. Uh, this isn't Nightbot that I'm using. This is, uh, Streamlabs Chatbot. Which I'm thinking of getting away from because of the shit that came out with Streamlabs recently, but... Whatever. For right now, it is what it is. All right, there we go. Your auto shout out should be working now. Anyway, it was her idea. And it, Monroe, you're actually going to see a, a different response from Pavati too, if you were to say something now. Same with Dave. Knowing her, it's no surprise that she'd want to do something like that. She probably just wants to show off. It's not like I have a particular interest in her writing style. God, they're, they're such bitches, all of them. I just went with her request. But, well, I suppose it's not so bad to write about something simple on occasion. It can be refreshing, you know? It's good for me to calm my thoughts once in a while. Yeah, I think I agree. You, you were kind of kind of derailing a little bit there, being a little ridiculous. But thanks for sharing. 
Bye. Monica. All right, why did it still not work that time? The fuck are you doing, Pavati? I'm not sure why it's not working. Oh well. I'll figure it out for next time. Yeah, I'm super excited to see you finish Final Fantasy IX. How's that going lately? Hi, Scoon. Have you thought about what you want to submit to perform at the festival? Well, being in this club is one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of people? <laughs> I'll have to give it some more thought. Okay, no pressure. But whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. It would also make me happy to see. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look at today's poem, shall we? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's see it. Dude, congratulations. Similarly, I haven't played this game since September, so... Similar. I let Monica take the poem I'm holding in my hands. Once more, once more for the new chatters. <clears throat> Here's my poem. Forgive Bounty Massacre, flying disoriented hope, heaven-sent bubbles, incapable sticky tragedy, loud after image aura explode, sparkle raindrops melancholy, ambient starscape. What do you think of it, Monica? What are your thoughts? Great job, Scoon. <clears throat> I was going, oh, in my head while reading it. Oh, I gotta hydrate. Okay. <clears throat> it's really metaphorical. I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. It's easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations low. That way, it always counts when I put in some effort. <laughs> That's not very fair. <clears throat> well, I guess it worked anyway. You know that Yuri likes this kind of writing, right? Writing that's full of imagery and symbolism. Unlike Sayori, who likes using simple and direct words to describe happiness and sadness, Yuri likes it when readers are left to derive their own meaning out of it. It's very challenging to write like that effectively, both allowing people to get something out of it just by feel, or letting them deeply analyze all of the nuances. It can take years of practice, which I'm assuming Yuri has at this point. I never really asked, though. I'm sure I'm nowhere near her level yet. Don't worry so much about that. You do your own thing. Just keep exploring and learn by trying new things. Anyway, I'll share my poem with you now, all right? Er, all right? The Lady Who Knows Everything. An old tale tells of a lady who wanders earth. The lady who knows everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer, all meaning, all purpose, and all that was ever sought. And here I am, a feather, lost adrift the sky, victim of the currents of the wind. Day after day I search, I search with little hope, knowing legends don't exist. But when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, the legend is all that remains, the last dim star glimmering in the twilight sky. Until one day, the wind ceases to blow. I fall. And I fall and fall and fall even more. Gentle as a feather. A dry quill. Expressionless. But a hand catches me between the thumb and forefinger. The hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her eyes and I find no end to her gaze. A lady who knows everything knows what I am thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer, all of which amount to nothing. There is no meaning. There is no purpose. And we seek only the impossible. I am not your legend. Your legend does not exist. And with a breath, she blows me back afloat, and I pick up a gust of wind. You know, I feel like learning and looking for answers are sort of things that give life meaning. 
not to get too philosophical or anything, but it was kind of on my mind, so that's what I wrote about. I see. I never really put much thought into it. In a way, it's almost paradoxical. Because if we had all the answers, wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? You know, there's one thing I noticed. It seems like everyone in the club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. <laughs> are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? Humans aren't two-dimensional creatures. I think you'd know that better than anyone. You mean one-dimensional? Oh... <clears throat> uh, yeah, that... Anyway... Here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Are you ever too shy to share your writing because you're afraid it's not that good? It can be really disheartening to get an, a lukewarm response to something you put so much into. But if you find other people who enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a lot easier. Because instead of just telling you that your writing is good or okay or bad, they'll want to focus more on everything that went into it and the things you can work on. It's much more encouraging that way, and it will make you want to continue improving. It's almost like having your own little literature club, don't you think? That's my advice for today. I'm still a little bit under the weather, Redbeard. Um, not not so much like the sickness that I was dealing with before. I've just had a super stuffy nose lately. Like, really bad. I don't know what's going on with my nose lately. Other than that, I've been fine. Thanks for listening. Okay, you three. We're all done sharing poems, right? Why don't we start figuring out... Hold on a second. Is it just me or did you say something strange just now? Eh? Something did sound a bit unusual. That's right. You deviated from your usual catchphrase when addressing the club. Catchphrase? I don't have a catchphrase. Jeez. Why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri isn't immune to it. Uh, stagnating air is common foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. In your books, maybe. Look, the only thing different is that Sayori isn't here. Ah, uh, it seems you're right. <sighs> Sayori always helps lighten the mood a little bit, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's balance is thrown off a little when she's not around. Where the heck did she run off to, anyway? I thought she just went to pee. Natsuki, please show some decency. Oh, come on. Uh, she actually wasn't feeling too well, and she went home early. Is that so? I hope she's all right. Seriously? Of all the times to not go home with her, you pick the time she's not feeling well? So much for you two being all lovey-dovey. Uh, no, no. First of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship with Sayori. And second, she's kind of been avoiding me today, so I didn't want to force it. That curious expression coming from Yuri, of all people? Calm down, guys. I talked to her earlier, and everything's fine. What did she say? Anyway, we need to figure out the rest of the festival preparations, so let's decide what everyone will be doing this weekend. Nice. Just completely deflect. What did she say? Anyway. <laughs> I already know what I'm doing. That's right. Natsuki will be making cupcakes. But we might need a lot of them in different flavors. Can you handle all that by yourself, Natsuki? Challenge accepted. And as for myself, I'm going to be printing and assembling all the poetry pamphlets. Sayori will be helping me design them. And as for Yuri... Yuri, you can... Um... Guys, can you help me come up with something for Yuri? <laughs> oh, fuck. I... I'm useless. No, that's not it at all. You're the most talented person here, you know. Oh, Monica. Now Natsuki's pouting too? Jeez, even I can tell now. I guess I never gave Sayori enough credit, but I can tell things are even harder on you when she's not around. Uh, that may be the case. But if I can't also be a leader on my own, then I won't grow as a person. So, Yuri, you have beautiful handwriting, you know? 
so you should make some banners and decorations to help set the atmosphere. Atmosphere? Um, about that. I... I love atmosphere. Yuri's expression suddenly changes at her as she stares at her desk and focuses and starts nodding to herself. Yes, of course, atmosphere, okay. Your mind is already racing, I see. That's great. You'll be a wonderful help, Yuri. But anyway, that just leaves you, Scoon. The only one who is truly useless. <laughs> Don't say that. In fact, both Natsuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks to handle. I would probably go a long it would probably go a long way to give one of them a hand. You could always help me out as well. I would be really appreciative of that. Uh, uh that's is Monica suggesting I spend the weekend with one of my club members? How on earth are they going to respond to a suggestion like that? Uh, I suppose I wouldn't mind a bit of help. Well, even if you don't know how to bake, there's always some dirty work I can give to you. It's not like Monica's going to give me a choice, and you shouldn't be sh sitting on your butt anyway. Natsuki tries to mumble a bunch of excuses like that. Um, if I recall, Natsuki, you mentioned that you would like to handle the baking on your own. Scoot may not like to be around if you only make... Sorry, if you only make him out to be a nuisance. So therefore, he may be more suited to assisting with the decorations. Hold on, I never said that. How hard could it be to make a few decorations anyway? It sounds more like you're making excuses for Scoot to... What are you saying? It'll be extremely meticulous work. And baking isn't? Just w what do you think... Guys, guys. Let's settle down for a moment. In the end, I think it's up to Scoot to decide how he'd like to contribute. Besides, he hasn't really gotten the chance to spend any time with me yet, you know? So I'm sure he's interested in... You literally just said... I I'm surprised as well. Sorry, sorry. I was just saying, though. Jeez. Can we just settle this already? Yeah. Scoot, you're okay with this, right? In the end, it's up to you. Uh... Of course. <laughs> Very well. In that case, everyone looks straight at me. But of course I'm going with... I'm pretty sure I did Natsuki the first time I played. I... Oh god, they're all such interesting decisions to make. Like, Sayori feels like the right answer here. But I really want to spend the weekend with Monica. I mean, I really want to help the club president with the hard work for the festival. So, what's it gonna be? Anyone in chat have any uh, suggestions? Just me. Yeah, I'm just going to go home. <laughs> like you got another intro. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> um, I mean, if it's going to be anyone, then I prefer helping Sayori. I mean, we're already neighbors and... But Monica said, Monica said that Sayuri was helping her. Jeez, do you really hate us that much? Uh, no. Sorry, I didn't mean for this to be difficult. Just think of the club, okay? All right, Monica. Well, I guess I should probably be helping Monica. <clears throat> yeah, you picked me. Hold on one second. I yeah. Monica, you're the one that needs the least help out of all of us. Huh? But I agree with Natsuki. Not only is your work ar already most suitable for one person, but you already have Sayori as well. But Scoot was the one who... <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. Uh, uh, that doesn't matter. You were, the, you were the one who scared him into picking you in the first place. You're the club president, Monica. You're supposed to make responsible decisions for the club. Monica, you shouldn't let any ulterior motives interfere with this decision. Ulterior motives? What are you saying, Yuri? In fact, it sounds like you guys are the ones with the ulterior motives. Excuse me? Otherwise, this wouldn't have been made into such a big deal in the first place. That's completely false, Monica. 
Yeah, we have a lot of work to do, you know. We won't do as good a job if you make us work alone. Uh, maybe that's true. Think of the club, Monica. If we want our event to succeed, then we need to appropriately distribute our resources. Um, uh, so are you going to help? Are you going to do the right thing, president? Okay, okay, I get it. It's technically most logical for Scoot to help one of you two. So, I guess that's what we'll do. All right. God damn it. Fine. We'll go with Natsuki. <clears throat> I need to stop coughing, too. Sorry. And you guys made it sound like a lot of work, so it could probably use two people. Don't worry. Baking is a ton of fun. You'll definitely agree. Huh? Just a minute ago, you were saying that... That's because... Never mind, okay? Well, anyway, you'll be fine by yourself, right, Yuri? Of course. I'm used to it, after all. Being alone. With no one caring or helping. That's... Good. Even though Yuri's being melodramatic, it's a little hard not to feel bad. So, that's everything, right? Anything else we need to talk about? Nope, I think that's it. Are you guys excited? Yes! Everything except the performance is going to be awesome. I don't think that really counts. What about you, Scoon? Me? Eh, I guess you could say I'm interested to see how it'll turn out. That's good enough for me. What about you, Yuri? Yuri? She's still sulking. Natsuki starts pouting, too. It's not... I mean, it's not that big of a deal or anything. Well, it might not just be that. I think that Yuri might just be feeling a little underappreciated in general. Having to come up with something for her to do and then nobody offering to help? That doesn't mean... Uh... Natsuki glances back and forth between everyone with a worried expression. Look. Natsuki goes over and puts her hands down on Yuri's shoulder. Yuri? You really are the most talented one here. And... And you're going to help me make the event... Help make the event look a lot more fun and welcoming. I mean, the cupcakes will probably help a lot too, but you're going to make the atmosphere special. That'll be really important for the way that people feel during the performances. So... You need to stop being dumb and give yourself a little more credit. Natsuki releases her hands and turns around to face the other direction. You didn't really mean that, did you? Um, not really, but Yuri isn't the only one surprised. Monica and I are also taken aback by Natsuki's words. Natsuki of all people to say, be saying such encouraging things. But I begin to understand. Natsuki was trying to sound like Sayori. Even if it didn't work perfectly, I can tell that she tried to say something Sayori would say at a time like this. Because Sayori always helps everyone smile and feel good about themselves. I'm sorry for being dumb. I'm going to do my best. And all of us are going to make it a really great event. Yeah. Yeah. I hope to see everyone do their best. <clears throat> uh, but with that, there's nothing more for today. So I guess it's time for us to head out. Okay, but I'm staying here a bit longer. I barely got to do any reading today, so... Fair enough, there's nothing wrong with that. Everyone packs up their things. I start to follow Monica and Yuri out the doors as they chat between each other. Um, where are you going? Huh? We still need to figure out our plans for this weekend. You literally would have gone home and realized that you didn't even have a way to contact me. Oh, fair point, fair point. I have no idea how that slipped my mind. Jeez, good thing I stopped you. I'm giving you my number, okay? You'd better not make it weird or anything. Why would I do that? <laughs> Natsuki gives me her number. Okay, I'm coming over on Sunday. I'll bring all the ingredients. Wait, you're coming to my house? Yeah, time to start the prank call. Time to give out her phone number to spam callers. Well, yeah. What's wrong with that? I mean, I just figured that since I'm the one helping, I would be going to your house. Yeah, right. Like, I could have a guy over my house. My dad would kill me. Really? It's kind of strict if you ask me. 
Yeah, how do you think I feel? <laughs> Natsuki, for calling you about your car's extended warranty. <laughs> oh my god. Why did that make me laugh? That's such a fucking low-hanging fruit, but it made me laugh. <clears throat> I can't do anything when my dad is home. Anyway, I just needed to complain for a second. We have each other's numbers now. That's all I needed from you. I guess I'll text you when I'm coming over. All right, fine by me. Yeah. I'm really going to show you why I love baking so much. So you'd better look forward to it. Oh? Didn't you say you were just going to give me the dirty work? Well, I was just saying that. It's not like I could act like in front of everyone that I was looking forward to this. Wait, really? Well, kind of. Just because I never got to bake with someone else before. That's all it is, so... All right, I get it, I get it. Stop. Let me leave now. Sorry for re overreacting. I'm heading out. Goodbye. Uh-oh. Never mind. I can't believe this. Natsuki is going to be coming to my house on Sunday? Even though I would have preferred to do this with Sayori? That's great. My anxiety still shoots through the roof. I guess I've gotten pretty used to handling her at this point. But who knows what might end up happening when we're outside of school. <laughs> she even told me she was... Huh? Looking forward to it? I shake my head. Why do I feel nervous that Sayori finds out about this? It's not like we feel that way about each other. Besides, like Monica said, this is about the club. I have nothing to worry about. If I just go with it, I'll have a good time. <laughs> Especially since it's outside of school, we're not going to have a good time. We're going to have a good time, huh? All right, here we go. It's already Sunday. Imagine that. I'm going to go to the bathroom real quick. Oh, wait, hold on. Wait, where's where's uh, Doki Doki? Why is Doki Doki not here? Why is Doki Doki not here? Doki Doki look up. Ba 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 ba. Ba 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 ba. And a ba 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 ba. I'll be back shortly, my friends. Don't go anywhere. And if you do, come back immediately. I love you guys.
Okay, we're back. Hello, everybody. It's already Sunday. Happy Sunday, everyone. Doing anything exciting? <clears throat> Doki, Doki. I've been getting incre increasingly anxious about Natsuki's upcoming visit. I keep telling myself there's no reason to be nervous, but it doesn't help much. I wonder if she'll act any different when it's just the two of us. Meanwhile, she's been texting me a lot. We sent each other one after... We sent each other one after... We sent each other one after exchanging numbers to double check, but it turned into conversation. She's almost a different personality on the phone, using a ton of emojis and cute language. She also really likes complaining about things, but I kind of saw that one coming. But putting Natsuki aside, I haven't heard a thing from Sayuri since she left the club early the other day. It's not like we text each other all the time or anything, but I've been worried about her in the back of my mind. Between what Sayori said and what Monica said, is it really okay for me to put Sayori's feelings aside when she might need me? No, go check on her. She's your neighbor. Yeah, there we go. I decide to visit Sayori before Natsuki comes over. Rather than asking, I simply tell her, I'm coming over, much like we've done in the past. Once I reach Sayori's house, I knock on the door before entering it myself. Again, we used to play so often that we've made it a habit of simply entering each other's houses like we were family. The house is quiet. Sayori isn't anywhere on the first floor, so I assume she's up in her room. It's already strange of her to not run down and greet me. I head up to the bedroom, where I finally find her. Sayori? Hi, Skoon. I sit down in her room. Sayori forces a smile, but it's easy to tell that she's different. There's a minute of silence between us. You haven't come over like this in a long time, have you? Ah, uh, I guess you're right. It has been a long time. Not much has really changed, has it? Sayori's room is messy as always been. Uh, I fucking butchered that. I also recognize the same stuffed animals and wall decorations that she's had for years now. <laughs> if you came over more often, it wouldn't be such a mess. That's because I end up cleaning it for you. How come you suddenly wanted to come over today? Aren't you supposed to see Natsuki today? Yeah, but... Wait, how did you know that? Sayori had already left by the time we decided that last meeting. Monica told me. It's only natural for her to keep me informed about the festival preparations, right? Nah, no, that's true. But what about you? Aren't you going to be helping Monica today? Of course. But I'm just helping her online. We didn't plan to meet up or anything. Ah, uh, so it's just me and Natsuki then. Yep. There's more silence between us. Sayori stares in a random direction. Everything about her behavior is really uncharacteristic. I finally get to the point. I just wanted to see how you're doing. After you left on Friday, when something's wrong, you can't hide it from me. I know you too well. So, Sayori smiles, shaking her head. That's no good, Scoon. Huh? Why can't why can't it just ugh. can't speak, sorry. Why can't it just be like it's always been? This is all my fault. If I didn't get so weak and accidentally express my feelings, if I didn't make that stupid mistake, then you wouldn't have been worried about me at all. You wouldn't have come here. You wouldn't have even been thinking about me right now. But this is just my punishment, isn't it? I'm getting punished for being so selfish. I think that's why the world decided to have you come over today. It just wants to torture me. <laughs> Sayori. I grab Sayori by the shoulders. What on earth are you saying? Are you listening to yourself right now? I know something happened to you. There's no other explanation for you to be like this. So tell me already. Until I know, I won't be able to stop thinking about it. Uh... <laughs> Sayori gives me an empty smile. You really put me in a trap, Scoon. But you're wrong. Nothing happened to me. I've always been like this. You're just seeing it for the first time. Seeing what? What are you talking about, Sayori? <laughs> you're really just going to make me say it, aren't you, Scoon? I guess I have no choice this time. The thing is... I've had really bad depression my whole life. Oof. That choked me up. <laughs> I don't know why to say Like, I already knew that was coming. But that choked me up to say. Did you know that? Why do you think I'm late to school every day? 
because most days I can't even find a reason to get out of bed. What reason is there to do anything when I fully know how worthless I am? Why go to school? Why eat? Why make friends? Why make other people put their energy and caring to waste by having them spend it on me? That's what it feels like. And that's why I just want to make everyone happy. I forgot how fucking hard this hits. <laughs> This is way too fucking close to home right now. Oof. I'm okay. I am okay, I promise. Without anybody worrying about me. I'm in shock. I can't even figure out how to respond. How is it possible that Sayori kept this from me the entire time that I've known her? Did she really want so badly for me to just not think about her? Why, Sayori? Huh? Why is it that you've never told me about this? It almost feels like I've been betrayed as your close friend. Because, oh, because if I knew, I would have done everything I could to support you. Even if there's only so much that I could do, I would have tried a little bit harder to make every day a little better for you. That's why I'm your friend. All you had to do was tell me. You don't understand at all, Scoon. Why do you think I didn't tell you? Because if I told you, then you would have to waste effort caring about me instead of doing important things. I don't want to be cared about. It's bittersweet when people try to care about me. It feels nice sometimes, but it also feels like a bat being swung against my head. <laughs> That's why I wanted so badly for you to make friends with everyone else. Helping everyone be happy together is the best thing for me. But then I discovered something else, too. Seeing you make friends and get closer with everyone in the club, it feels like a spear going through my heart. So that's why... That's why I decided the world just wants to torture me. Every path leads to nothing but hurt. <laughs> You're right that I don't understand. I don't understand your feelings at all, Sayori. But I need to understand. Uh, but I don't need to understand. Whatever it takes for me to help you stop hurting, that's what I'll do. No, Scoot. There's nothing. Nothing at all. The only thing that could have helped is if everything could like be like it always was. But I was selfish. I finally showed you what a horrible person I am. Tears streaked down Sayori's face. I made you join the literature club because I was selfish. And I was punished by my heart hurting in a way that I couldn't understand. And now you came here, and I made you hurt, too. I'm just weak and selfish. That's all I am. And that's why I'm going to accept these punishments. Because I deserve every last one. Without thinking, I once again grab Sayori's shoulders. Now just fucking hug her at this point. This time... Okay, there we go. <laughs> fucking... R knew it. I pull her into a tight embrace. Uh, Scoon... Sayori, I don't care if you feel selfish. I'm really happy that you convinced me to join the club. Seeing you every day makes it worthwhile enough. If I make friends with everyone else, that's just a bonus. But please never underestimate how much I care about you. I wouldn't have it any other way. Scoon, Sayori isn't hugging me back. Despite my arms being wrapped around her, Sayori's arms remain at her sides. She starts sobbing next to my ear. No, don't do this to me. Please don't do this. Scoon, I... Sayori barely manages to speak between her sobs. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. But all I want is for her to know that I care. If you have it in, in you to call yourself selfish, then you have to let me be selfish too. No matter what it takes, I'll figure out what needs to change. I'll make these feelings go away. And if there's anything that you need me to do, then you'd better tell me. I'll get mad if you don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Gently, Sayori, gently, Sayori finally puts her arms around me in return. I don't know anything. It's all really scary. This is, like, seriously hitting, like, 
way too fucking close to home right now as like the way she's acting right now is the exact way I feel when I'm having a bad break and someone tries to care about me like it it's so fucking scary and like they're just people ask me they're like what can I do to help you and I'm like I don't know they're like what's wrong I'm like I don't know it's just it's just there. It's just a feeling that you can't really shake. And like, the part where she said like, it feels really nice to be like cared about and whatever, and, but it also feels like a bat to the head. Yeah. I, that is That is pretty much how it feels sometimes. Because, like, you don't want to be a burden to anyone. You don't want to, like, have anyone waste their time on you when they could be doing something better. I don't understand any of my feelings, Scoon. The only time I'm not feeling nothing is when I'm feeling pain. But your hugs are so warm. And that's really scary, too. Sayori lets me go. As she does so, I let her go as well. The festival's tomorrow. Yeah. It's going to be fun, right? Yeah. How would you like for me to spend it all with you? How would you like for me to spend it all with you? Um. Uh. It's what I want. I promise. I. I think that would be nice then. Yeah. Sayori wipes her eyes. If I could spend the whole day here, I would. Of all days, this has to be the one where I have other plans. Maybe I should cancel. No, don't. Please don't. If you did that, then I would really wouldn't forgive you. But it's almost time for Natsuki to meet me at my house. At the very least, do you want to come along and help out? It would be fun. To my surprise, Sayori shakes her head. I'm sorry. I don't know if that would be very good for me today. You understand, right? Ah. It's kind of hard for me to fully understand. But I'm trying my hardest. It's okay. Don't worry too much about it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Alright. Well, I look forward to it. I say goodbye to Sairi and exit her house. On my way home, I find myself still feeling uneasy. But it's hard for me to keep thinking about it when Natsuki is about to come over, too. I think Sayori is right. I shouldn't be worrying too much, and we're definitely going to have a great time tomorrow. Definitely. Absolutely. I should just focus on what's ahead of me. I spend only a few minutes back at the home, at home, anxiously awaiting Natsuki's arrival. Before I know it, she texts me to let me know if she's outside the front door. Without delay, I open the front door and let her in. Sup? Hey, I don't know what I was expecting, but seeing Natsuki in something other than her school uniform totally threw me off. Seeing her in such a cute clothes makes the uniform seem totally unfitting in comparison. Yeah, that's a pretty cute outfit. Jeez, don't make it feel so awkward already. It's going to be a long afternoon, so don't be weird just because you're not used to seeing me outside of school. Anyway, I'm coming in. I see you brought a lot of stuff. Natsuki is carrying a large bag that is probably full of baking supplies. Well, I didn't want to come all this way out. Sorry, I didn't want to come all this way to find out that your kitchen isn't equipped for the job. You bought everything I asked you to, right? Yeah, I did. Yesterday, Natsuki asked me to buy a bunch of ingredients if I didn't already have them at home. Good. Glad I could count on you to do your part. Well, of course. I'm surprised to hear Natsuki suddenly say that rather than something snarky like she usually does. Could it be that she's a little different outside of school after all? Anyway, let's go to the kitchen. What, you're not even going to offer to take this heavy bag from me? Where's your hospitality, Scoon? Come on. Since when did I need to be a gentleman? I grab the bag next Natsuki holds out to me. This is ridiculously heavy. <laughs> I carried that all the way here. Are you impressed? I see now. Yeah. I am impressed, Natsuki. It seems like I always underestimate you. <laughs> it's because I'm so small, isn't it? You jerk. 
Natsuki hits a fist into my chest. Hey, hey. Your size has nothing to do with it. Do you really hate being small that much? Eh? Um, it's not like I hate it. I mean, sometimes I like proving people wrong when they only think I'm worth my size. It's fun when I get to be small and also better than other people. But, geez, never mind. What are you making me say? Don't think you can make me talk about weird things just because we're not at school. Are we getting started or what? There's a lot of stuff I got to teach you. <laughs> what? That's a little bit more like you. You're more fun when you just speak your mind like that. Hey! Now you are treating me like a kid. I was just trying to be a little nicer to you, you know? And just because I don't have a mature and sexy figure like Yuri does doesn't mean you should treat me like... Uh, uh. Natsuki catches her words and her face turns red. Natsuki? Forget it. I didn't say anything. I should apologize. Huh? I appreciate that you were trying to be nicer. I should have been a little more considerate too. But also, if that's what you're thinking, then you should know that there are tons of guys who are into body types like yours. Ah, uh, how would you know that anyway? Uh, because I use the internet and I interact with people. Just trust me on this one. Gross. Hey, was that to me? Who else? Man, let's just get started already. <laughs> you get all sour when a girl calls you gross. I finally found your weakness, Scoon. Natsuki smiles deviously. Please spare me. Well, if Natsuki decides to dish out more insults like that, there's no way I'm not fighting back. <clears throat> but she's satisfied enough for now, finally starting to pull things out of her bag so we can get started. <clears throat> Before long, the whole kitchen is a mess. Spoons, dirty bowls, flowers, spilled fluid. Sorry, what? Spilled what now? And plastic bags are strewn about every countertop. On water break. All right. <clears throat> the mixer isn't big enough to make all the batter at once, so we've had to do it several times. Meanwhile, Natsuki is babysitting all of my movements to make sure I don't mess up her precious baking. Skewed, where did you put the food coloring? The batter is going in the oven soon, so I need to fill the trays. I think it's still in the bag next to the table. What are you using it for? To color the batter, of course. <clears throat> I'm making each tray a different color. That way, even if the flavors aren't different, everyone can still pick their favorite. Oh, that's a cute idea. Are we doing anything like that with the icing? Do you want to? Um, you're asking me? I don't really have a preference, so... Come on, you're not putting any heart into this at all. Can't you at least try to have fun? I'm having fun. I'm not really sure what Natsuki's trying to get out of me. Meanwhile, I see her separate the batter into smaller bowls and put a few drops of food coloring into each. Ah, oh, that does look pretty cool. See? It's not like baking is just about following instruction. The presentation is where you get to be creative and have the most fun. It's a million times more worth it in the end if, I just, if just looking at it makes everyone's eyes lighten up. Like the ones you made on my first day, huh? I recall Natsuki proudly presenting her cat-shaped ear cupcakes. Cat-shaped... There's no... The word ear is not there. I'm stupid. Cat-shaped cupcakes and Sayori and Monica's delighted expression. I wonder if I can make Natsuki proud like that, too. Yeah. Maybe I will use the food coloring, then. Sounds like you're starting to understand. Just make sure you completely finish mixing the icing before you mess with the food coloring. Yeah, it's getting there. We were using the electric mixture for the batter, so I got stuck with a whisk and a huge bowl for the icing. Eh? <sighs> Sorry. The icing's still all lumpy. Are you even trying? Well, yeah. It'll just take a little longer. Jeez, I'll be here all night if you do it like that. Here, look. Natsuki grabs the whisk from me and uses her other hand to tilt the bowl back. You really need to beat the crap out of it. After a few seconds, the consistency of the icing has already improved. See? 
As if to emphasize, Natsuki sticks a finger in the icing and pops it in her mouth. I reluctantly start to do the same. Hey! Natsuki suddenly grabs my wrist. I don't want your gross fingers in my icing. Your icing, eh? Are you forgetting who did all the work? I start to fight back, trying to inch my finger towards the bowl. Don't make me beat the crap out of you next. I'd like to see you try. I push harder, just enough for my finger to reach the icing. I triumphantly scoop some uh, with my finger, just as Natsuki tugs with all her might. Ah! The force of Natsuki pulling me causes me to st causing me to stumble, making her stumble in turn. I already see where this is going. Gross! You got it in my face! Whose fault is that? There's a big glob of icing on Natsuki's cheek. Mm. She tries to reach it with her tongue, but it's too far away. Jeez. You know what? Take this. Natsuki instead wipes it off with her finger before shoving her finger toward my own face. You wish. I'm faster. I grab her wrist by my hand before it reaches my face. Natsuki tries to use her other hand to fight back, but I grab that one as well. <laughs> Stop. Not until you apologize for calling me gross. Fine, fine. I'm sorry for calling you gross. You know I didn't mean it. It's just fun seeing you react to it. You do that to me all the time, you know. Saying dumb things just to get a reaction out of me. You really shouldn't tease girls like that. Is that so? In that case, I probably shouldn't do this either. I take Natsuki's finger and put it in my mouth, licking off the icing. You're right, you shouldn't be doing that. What? Did you seriously just... Uh... Natsuki is so surprised that she can't even figure out how to get mad at me. Her face is entirely red. Scoon, you really shouldn't do that kind of thing to girls unless you really like them. You know that, right? What kind of question is she asking me just like that? I mean, what kind of fucking move was that? That's so fucking creepy. How did the moon tur mood turn to this so quickly? I... Natsuki gazes at me in silence. I notice her shallow breaths. Why am I starting to feel dizzy? Eh? I don't know where the fire alarm starts going off. Natsuki rushes over to the oven. Is something burning? I thought you didn't put the cupcakes in yet. Cough! No wonder. You left a dirty tray in here, dummy. <coughs> How could you make a mistake like that? Sorry, one moment. You should have checked before turning the oven on. Don't blame me for your mistakes. Jeez. Natsuki uses an oven mitt to grab the blackened tray out of the oven. She sets it on top of the stove. In another moment, the fire alarm stops. Anyway, I'm putting them in the oven now. Yeah. The tension from the moment before still lingers over our heads. But the moment has already been lost. I watch as Natsuki slides the cupcake trays into the oven. Then I reluctantly pick up the whisk and continue with the icing like nothing ever happened. Ah, that smells so good. The cupcakes are ready to be pulled out of the oven. As soon as Natsuki opens the oven door, a blast of sweet-smelling warm air fills the room. Look at how cute they all look. She proudly shows off the different colored cupcakes in each of the trays. They'll look even better once we add the icing. Not like you need to tell me that. I brought decorating stuff, so I hope you can get creative. Here, scoop the icing into these bags. Natsuki hands me some plastic bags. I have these nozzles that'll make it look nice and fluffy. This one can even make flowers. We probably won't be using it this time, though. What's this one for? I pick up one of the nozzles that has a much thinner tip than the others. That one's really thin, so you can use it to make stripes or other patterns. But you can also use it to write stuff on a cake. Like, happy birthday or whatever. Huh, I see. That gives me an idea, actually. Huh? Well, it's a literature event, right? We could make it more literature themed by writing a different word on each of the cupcakes. It would be fun to see people choose the cupcake based on the word they like. Oof. Hmm? I was kind of expecting you to say something really stupid. But that's actually a really cute idea, so... <laughs> That's right, I'm fucking genius. Let's go. Let's fucking go. Maybe I'm getting it from you. What's that supposed to mean? I'm not cute. Come on. 
We're not at school. Nobody's judging. You can't dress and act like this and not expect me to think you're cute. Well, Natsuki's voice trails off. Same with you. Huh? Did you say something? No, nothing. Let's just do the icing. Natsuki picks up the uh, pace and fastens the nozzle onto each of the bags. There's a lot to do, so we shouldn't be wasting time. Here, I'll show you how to do it. Without giving me a chance to think about before, Natsuki quickly moves on. He shows me how to apply the icing, and then we each get to work. When we're finally finished, Natsuki puts them all side by side to admire our work. Look how pretty they are together. Yeah, they are, aren't they? Oh, I wish I could have one now. Well, there's no reason you can't, right? I don't see any harm in that. Well, yeah, but my dad's making dinner tonight, so I really need to save my appetite. <laughs> Sayori's the exact opposite in that regard. If she was here, we'd probably be down 10 cupcakes already. And she would still eat dinner. Come on, that's just unhealthy. Besides, when my dad cooks, I need to eat as much of it as I can. Well, anyway, I was hoping we would have time for manga, but I need to be home for dinner. Ah, already? That's a shame. It's your fault for working so slowly. You should have thought about that. It's not like you'll always have this chance. Man. As usual, Natsuki places the blame on me. You can bring the cupcakes tomorrow, right? If you and Sire each carry some, then you can probably do it in one trip. Yeah, I can do that. And don't worry, I won't let her eat any. <laughs> I wish she would listen to me the way she listens to you. Ah, uh, yeah. I again think back to the conversation I had with Sir Sayori earlier today. I felt so helpless. Sayori always does listen to me, but at that point, it felt like she couldn't listen to me at all. Okay, I'm all packed up. Good work today. You too. I'll walk you out, I guess. Just like that, Natsuki is already about to leave. It feels like the afternoon went by in a flash. More than that, did I even take the opportunity to get closer to her like I wanted? Well, I guess I'll be off then. Thanks for all the help and everything. I'll see you tomorrow. Wait, Natsuki. Yeah? What you said before, about not always having this chance. It doesn't have to be that way at all. I had fun today. You showed me how fun baking can be like you wanted. But aside from that, you can come over any time, okay? I think that if possible, I'd like to spend more time like this. If you want to read manga or go out somewhere... Um, do you really mean that? Natsuki looks at me tensely like she's trying to hide her expression. Yeah, I want to spend more time with you. Dude, I thought you only cared about getting this done. Ugh. I'm sorry I had to leave so early today. I really didn't want to. I would really stay here longer if I could. I feel the same way as you, so... Natsuki suddenly gets closer to me. Wait, Natsuki. Standing inches from me, Natsuki looks up at me. I feel her fingers gently clutch at the sides of my shirt, as if holding on to me. Her rose-colored cheeks and matching eyes fill my vision, along with her slightly parted lips. What is happening? Oh, it's called a kiss. I understand the confusion, though. Uh, my head starts to go dizzy, as if I feel her soft breaths against me. I felt it for a while now. Natsuki suddenly jumps back. S Sayori? Huh? Ah, uh, uh, hi, Scoon. Sayori, just now we weren't... <laughs> it's okay, Scoon. I just stopped by to say hi. Ah, uh, uh, well, you should have come a little earlier. I'm already on my way out, so... Aw, oh, really? That's too bad. Yeah, well, I'll still see you at the festival tomorrow, so it's fine. Just don't eat any cupcakes before then. Anyway, later. Clearly flustered, Natsuki hurries off and Sayori waves goodbye. Sayori, I thought you didn't want to come over today. <laughs> well, I tried staying in my room, but my imagination was being really mean to me. So I had to come here and see it for myself. See what? What are you talking about? You know how much fun you were having with Natsuki and how close you got to her it makes me really happy 
that you've made such good friends. That's all that matters to me. Tears start to fall down Sayuri's face. That's all that matters to me. Why am I feeling this way, Scood? I'm supposed to be happy for you. Why does it feel like my heart is splitting in half? It hurts so much. Everything hurts so much. This would be so much better if I could just disappear. Sayori, don't say that. It's true, Scood. If I wasn't here, then you wouldn't have to waste your sympathy on me. You wouldn't have to put up with me being selfish. Monica was right. I should just... Monica? Monica was right about what? Sayori? What I said before is true. I'm not going to let this continue. Caring about you like this isn't the burden your mind is making it out to be. It's something that makes me happy. It's something that I wouldn't trade for anything else. So even if it takes an entire lifetime, I'm going to be by your side until you don't feel any more pain. Oops. Oops. But Thyri looks away. I put a hand on her shoulder to reassure her. I'm scared, Scoon. I'm really scared. What are you scared of, Sayori? I'm scared that... That I might like you more than you like me. Sayori? It's true, isn't it? I was weak and started to like you too much. I did this to myself. Scoon, I like you so much that I want to die. That's how I feel. And... And... That's enough, Sayori. I don't want you to hurt anymore. I slide my hand down Sayori's arm and squeeze her hand in my own. You remember how I said I always know what's best for you? Do you still believe me? Wordlessly, Sayori nods. Even if you don't understand all of your own feelings, I know what you need the most right now. And that's what I'm going to give to you. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no. Oh, man. <laughs> this is so fucked up. She doesn't need either of these right now. She doesn't need either of these right now. Because this is just gonna imp impose so much more of a burden on her mind. And so many second thoughts and whatever, second guessing. And like, so many other things. Like, right now, she needs a friend. But using the phrasing, always be my dearest friend, implies that it could never be anything else, you know? I mean, you can say I love you to your homies. Let's fucking full send. I love you. Eh? Those are my true feelings. So there's no way you could like me more than I like you. Oh no, we're, we're full sending the romance, of course we are. I should have realized it sooner, but spending time with everyone at the club, making new friends, and having fun with you every day, it helped me realize that you are truly the most important person to me. That's why I'll accept any of your burden. As long as we continue like this every day, with you by my side, then I know we'll both be happy. Dude. Suddenly, Sayuri wraps her arms tightly around me. Dude. Is this really okay? Yeah. I hold Sayori in my arms and pull her closer. You'll never have to let go of me again. I love you, Scoot. I want to be with you forever. Me too. I feel Sayori's grip around me weaken a little bit. What is this? Sayori? I'm supposed to be happy right now. Yep, this is what I thought was going to happen. I always thought this would be the happiest moment for me. But why? Even now, why won't the rain clouds go away? They're not going away at all, Scoot. It's okay, Sayori. It might take some time for things to get better again. But no matter how long it takes, I'll be there every step of the way. That's all that matters right now. It's also freaking me out how, like... I mean, I guess it's a very generic anime boy character... But, like, the hair color, the hair length, the hairstyle, the black shirt. This is literally just my character. <laughs> this is Scood right here. This is actually Scood. <clears throat> it's so funny. Oh, okay. I trust you. Sayori and I slowly release each other. 
So, I guess that makes the festival tomorrow our first date, huh? <laughs> what are you saying? I don't want to think about those things, you know? I want everything to be the same as it's always been. Even if we really are a couple. I don't know if I can handle anything more right now. It's really new and scary to me. I understand. We'll go at whatever pace suits you best. Hey, Scoon. Clary gazes at me once again, smiling sadly. Even if I get really, really sad, this is the best thing for me, right? Oh, God, I hate that. I don't really understand what Sayori means by that. Are you saying that this is making you feel sad, Sayori? I don't know. I don't understand what I'm feeling. It felt like a bunch of thorns when you told me you loved me. But that's why I want to trust you. You know what's best for me. Yeah. I do. God, no you fucking don't. You fucking scumbag. I'm sorry. This pisses me off. You don't know what's best for someone else. They know what's best for themselves. And sometimes they don't know. But you're not going to come in and be like, I know what's best for you, so date me. Like, fuck that. I kind of regret that choice, even though the other one probably... Both, both choices were bad. That's my promise. I say that, but in reality, I've never mo felt more uncertain when it comes to Sayori. I know that I love her, and she loves me. But I'm having as much trouble understanding Sayori's feelings as she is. Even though I can comfort her, I keep wondering if I should be doing something more, or something different. I know these thoughts will continue to plague me until things are back to the way they were. Is that what Sayori meant by not wanting anything to change? I don't know. But I know that I'll give it everything I've got. Sayori is the most important person to me, and I'll do whatever it takes to have a happy future with her. It's the day of the festival. Of all days, I expected this to be the one where I'd be walking to school with Sayori, but Sayori isn't answering her phone. I considered going to her house to wake her up, but decided that's a little too much. Meanwhile, the preparations for the event should be nearly complete. I managed to carry all the cupcakes myself by carefully stacking two trays. Natsuki's already texting up a storm, but I can't respond thanks to my hands being full. Funnily enough, I probably feel the same way as Natsuki about the event. I'm more excited for it to be over so I can spend time with Sayori and Natsuki at the festival. But, knowing Monica, I'm sure the event will be great too. Scoon, you're the first one here. Thanks for being early. That's funny, I thought at least Yuri would be here by now. Monica is placing little booklets on each of the desks in the classroom. They must be the ones she prepared that have all the poems we're performing. In the end, I found a random poem online that I thought Monica would like and submitted it. So that's the one I'll be performing. I'm surprised you didn't bring Sayori with you. Yeah, she overslept again. That dummy. You'd think that on days that this important, she'd try a little harder. I say that, but I suddenly remember what Sayori told me yesterday and I suddenly feel awful knowing it's not nearly that simple for her. I only said it because it's the way I'm used to thinking. But maybe I should have gone to wake her up after all. <laughs> you should take a little responsibility for her, Scoon. I mean, especially after your exchange with her yesterday. You kind of left her hanging this morning, you know? Oh, Monica. Oh, Monica. Holy shit. Exchange? Monica, you know about that? Of course I do. I'm the club president, after all. But I stammer, embarrassed. Did Sayori really tell her about it that quickly? That we're a couple now? I didn't really plan on bringing it up with anyone yet. Jeez. You don't know the full story at all, so... Don't worry. I probably know a lot more than you think. Oh, yeah? Monica's being as friendly as usual, but for some reason I felt a chill down my spine after hearing that. Hey, do you want to check out the pamphlets? They came out really nice. Yeah, sure. I'll grab one of the pamphlets laid out on the desks. Oh yeah, they really did. Something like this will definitely help people take the club more seriously. Yeah, I thought so too. I flipped through the pages. Each member's poem is neatly printed on its own page, giving it an almost professional feel. 
I recognize Natsuki's and Yuri's poems from the ones they performed during our practice. What's this? I flipped to Sayori's poem. It's different from the one she practiced. It's one that I haven't read before. Get out of my head, 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 get out of my head. You get the point. Get out of my head before I do what I know is best for you. Get out of my head before I listen to everything she said to me. Get out of my head before I show you how much I love you. Get out of my head before I finish writing this poem. But a poem is never actually finished. It just stops moving. Uh, uh, what is this? Reading the poem, I get a pit in my stomach. Schoon? What's wrong? Uh, nothing. This poem feels completely different from everything else Sayori has written. But more than that, uh, I changed my mind. I'm going to get Sayori, so... Well, all right. All right, who's still in chat right here? Try not to take too long, okay? I I want I want a, a roll call from anyone who's still still hanging out, still hanging out and doesn't want to hop out of lurk. If you guys want to keep lurking, fine. I just want to know that I'm not alone for this. That's all. All right, good. Dave's here. I quickly leave the classroom. Don't strain yourself. Monica calls that out after me. I quicken my pace. What was I thinking? I should have tried a little bit harder for Sayori. It's not a big deal to at least wait for her or help her wake up. Even the simple gesture of walking her to school makes her really happy. Besides, also I'm sure you guys have noticed, there's no background music. I told her yesterday that things will be the same as they always have been. That's all she needs. And what I want to give her. Good, Maddie's here too. That's That's good. I reach Sayori's house and knock on the door. I don't expect an answer since she's not picking up her phone either. Like yesterday, I open the door and let myself in. The the thing is, I know what's going to happen, and I'm already I am still getting that sinking feeling, you know. The anticipation. Sayori, she really is a heavy sleeper. I swallow. Can't believe I ended up doing this after all, waking her up in her own house. That really is something that a boyfriend would do, isn't it? In any case, it just feels right. Outside Sayori's room, I knock on her door. Sayori? Wake up, dummy. There's no response. I really didn't want to have to enter her room like this. Isn't it kind of a breach of privacy? But she really leaves me no choice. I gently open the door. S What the hell? What the hell? Is this a nightmare? It has to be. This isn't real. There's no way this can be real. Sayori wouldn't do this. Everything was normal up until a few days ago. That's why I can't believe what my eyes are showing me. I suppress the urge to vomit. Just yesterday, I told Sayori I would be there for her. I told her I know what's best and that everything will be okay. Then why? Why would she do this? How could I be so helpless? What did I do wrong? Confessing to her. I shouldn't have confessed to her. That's not what Sayori needed at all. She even told me how painful it is for others to care about her. Then why did I confess to her and make her feel even worse? Why was I so selfish? This is my fault. My swarming thoughts keep telling me everything I could have done to prevent this. If I just spent more time with her, walked her to school, and remained friends with her like it's always been, then I could have prevented this. I know I could have prevented this. Screw the literature club. Screw the festival. I just lost my best friend. Someone I grew up with. She's gone forever now. Nothing I do can bring her back. This isn't some game where I can... I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry.
<laughs> I'm sorry for laughing right now. I had only one chance and I wasn't careful enough. And now I'll carry this guilt with me until I die. Nothing in my life is worth more than hers. But I still couldn't do what she needed from me. And now, I can never take it back. Never. 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 End. Well, how'd you guys like Doki Doki Literature Club? Pretty good game, right? Pretty sad ending. Really unexpected. Really, um... So that's going to be it for tonight's stream. <laughs> we will uh, we'll continue this next... Uh, we'll continue this on Friday. I, I wanted to end it right after the Sayori thing anyway. But, um... Yeah. No, we're going to... We're going to... Yeah. We're going to do this on Friday. Thanks for hanging out. The real fun of the game begins now. This is, this is where everything... Well, I'm not going to spoil anything for anyone who hasn't played, but, uh, this is the turning point. Take care, everyone. <laughs>